What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and today we are talking about a free agent goalkeeper that Liverpool really should sign. His name is Daniel Subasic. He's a Croatian international footballer who played a lot of seasons for AS Monaco. He won the French League with Monaco and he also played for the Croatian national team 44 times. So he's a very, very experienced goalkeeper and I think that Liverpool should sign him and Paul Robinson the former England goalkeeper thinks that the Croatia international would be an outstanding addition to Jurgen Klopp's side and because he's a free agent Liverpool can sign him at any point in the season even outside of the transfer window so Subasic was the Croatia number one goalkeeper when Croatia reached the World Cup final in 2000. 18 and he's a big big save from Harry Kane in the semi-finals prevented England from going 2-0 up against Croatia and uh, perhaps winning the semi-final so he made history with Croatia qualifying them for their first World Cup final in their history and let me know guys what do you think about this do you think Liverpool should go for him in the comments below and if you enjoy these transfer news updates leave a like and half of you guys have not subscribed to this channel who watch these videos so make sure to subscribe turn on the bell notification enable the YouTube notifications so you never miss the uploads. He retired from international football after Croatia lost the World Cup final to France and he spent the last nine seasons at Monaco which is absolutely incredible and last season he didn't play a lot of games he only played one match in the French League Cup so he's a little bit out of form but I think he's a better and more experienced goalkeeper than Adrian I mean you don't reach a World Cup final with Croatia unless you are a world-class goalkeeper and he is now available on a free transfer so it would cost absolutely nothing for Liverpool to sign him apart from his wages after his contract expired and this is what Paul Robinson, the former England and the former Tottenham goalkeeper said about Robinson, about Subasic. Subasic is an outstanding footballer, a top goalkeeper that did brilliantly for Croatia in the World Cup. I am very surprised that he is still a free agent. I thought somebody would have snapped him up by now. Adrian is out of form and his confidence looks uh, shot to pieces. If Alisson is going to be out for six weeks, Subasic would be an outstanding signing for Liverpool. I fully agree, Adrian's confidence is, is lower than and ever before in his Liverpool career. And what is also significant and very important is that the backline's confidence in Adrian now our first choice goalkeeper because Alisson is out injured is also very low so we might have a shaky defense against Everton and do we really want to go into every Premier League game until Alisson is back uh, with the mentality that we need to score three four five goals to win a game of football because we will always concede two or three goals with Adrian in goal that's not a good good uh, recipe in the Premier League and Everton started the season on fire they have won all their games so far all their six games including two league cup games so it's going to be a really tough game and Firmino by the way did very well for Brazil again he assisted Richard Lisson who will be playing for Everton in Brazil's 4-2 comeback win in Peru the concern is that that game kicked off at 2 a.m this morning or this dawn in uh, South America 2 a.m. Uh, European time that's 1 a.m. UK time and uh, both uh, Firmino and um, Fabinho need to fly back to Liverpool and get some rest and get ready for the Everton game so let's actually take a little closer look at Daniel Subasic uh, he is a very tall goalkeeper 191 centimeters tall that's six foot three inches tall for the British people out there and he started his uh, career of course in Croatia playing for Zadar and then he played for Haidu Split for three seasons before signing for Monaco and he has been an ever-present for Monaco except last season he played a total of 292 games for Monaco and guess what he even scored a goal <laughs> for Monaco I'm not sure how that happened in his first season but that was in the French second division and also he played 44 times for the Croatia national team 
He won the French League with Monaco, as I said before, and also he won the silver medal at the FIFA World Cup in 2018. And Subasic had an absolutely amazing uh, go World Cup in 2018. He played a key role in Croatia's match against Denmark in the round of 16, where he saved three penalties in the penalty shootout, equaling the record number set by Ricardo in the 2006 World Cup. I still remember that Portugal-England World Cup uh, penalty shootout where Ricardo saved three penalties and he also scored the winning penalty. He took it off his gloves before saving the last England penalty and he... And uh, also a fun fact, in, this, in that game, uh, Kasper Schmeichel, in that game, the Denmark goalkeeper, saved the penalty kick in extra time and two penalties in the penalty shootout and that was a World Cup record because both goalkeepers saved six penalties in uh, that game which is a record and against Russia in the quarterfinals uh, he made a lot of really really significant saves to help Croatia qualify for the semi-finals and of course we know the England-Croatia semi-final where England were 1-0 up, Harry Kane had the chance to make it 2-0 and Subasic made a big save and the rest is history, Croatia turned it around and qualified for the World Cup final. And many of you guys have asked about an update on Jack Butland and what is going on with him. At the moment there are no news, it looks like Liverpool are not in talks with Stoke over the transfer or the loan deal of Jack Butland. It looks like that transfer um, link went cold. It looks like Liverpool will go with Adrian for the foreseeable future, which I think is a big risk at this stage of the season. But we just have to hope that the Liverpool defense can sort out the, def the, the defending and hopefully not too many shots will go in on Adrian's goal because I just have no confidence in Adrian saving Liverpool many many points in the next three, six weeks and we could lose the title race if we are not careful if we drop too many points in these uh, six weeks until Alisson is back then we could be so far behind either Man City or whoever will be top of the Premier League that it will be difficult to claw that back and also momentum is huge in football and if Liverpool lose uh, two or three games in this period then that will be a very big momentum killer but I trust Liverpool and this team to figure it out because we are champions for a reason we have this really really incredible mentality and I'm really looking forward to the Merseyside derby hopefully Liverpool will bounce back from that heavy defeat against Aston Villa Swansea City are also leading the race to sign Liverpool winger Harry Wilson on loan before Friday's transfer deadline. Remember that the domestic transfer window is still open in England, which means that Premier League clubs can do business with lower league clubs and vice versa. So we could still sell or loan out Harry Wilson to a championship side and the Swansea City are very keen on Harry Wilson and considering that Ryan Brewster had a very successful half a season at Swansea, I would be happy for Harry Wilson to go on loan at Swansea City. They play the right kind of football and they are pushing for promotion. They are in promotion places already starting the season with two wins and one draw in their first three games, I think. And Liverpool were willing to sell Harry Wilson in this summer, but they rejected a bid of 12 million pounds plus add-ons from Burnley shortly before the Premier League transfer window closes uh, because they value Harry Wilson closer to 20 million uh, because they had a productive season but there was no follow-up offer from Burnley they said we are not paying more than 12 million plus add-ons so Wilson is still at Liverpool and I think maybe a loan move for Harry Wilson makes sense because he won't play much in uh, this Liverpool team and for him to just rot away in the reserves or on the bench and to play on the 23 pro football would be a really really bad thing about his for his development because he had such a good season at Bournemouth where he played regularly and that's what you need to do when you are 23 years old and you want to make it you need to play either Premier League or Championship football and also what's very telling is that Wilson was not included in Liverpool's Champions League squad list and uh, the newspapers understand that the club will consider offers from the Championship before Friday's deadline so we will have a resolution 
on this matter. And also Marco Gujic already joined Porto on loan, so Harry Wilson could follow as the next player. And I don't think we will send anybody, anybody else on loan. We sold Brewster, we loaned Gujic out, we probably will loan Harry Wilson out to Swansea or another uh, club. Uh, also defender Nathaniel Phillips is wanted by a host of championship clubs including Nottingham Forest and Middlesbrough and Ben Woodburn could move to League One with both Charlton and Hull City Keane and Liam Miller and midfielder Herbie Kane may also earn temporary moves. So these are the players that Liverpool are looking to sell or move on at the moment. And then I have such a good news for you guys. Finally Joel Matip is back in training alongside Thiago and Sadio Mane. They all trained at Melwood yesterday ahead of the Merseyside Derby. Paul Gorst, the Liverpool Echo journalist, uh, said that and I'm just so so happy that Matip is back because we need a very good Matip. Gomez has been shaky against Aston Villa so I'm, I'm really hoping that Matip can get fit as quickly as possible and he can start games. And Peter Moore, the former Liverpool CEO, said that Liverpool actually feared that we would not be able to win the Premier League title last season and the season will be a write-off, especially in the first couple of weeks after lockdown when the pandemic hit. This is what he said, I was worried in the first couple of weeks. These were unprecedented times and we were all trying to figure out what it meant and how long it could go on for. There were some calls to erase the season as though it had never happened. The 20 clubs usually meet once a quarter. We had 17 shareholder meetings in less than 90 days. There was self-interest from teams who felt threatened. It is tough to argue against them if your livelihood depends on it. I was concerned at first but pretty quickly I could see we were rolling up our sleeves and everyone understood we had to finish the season and thank goodness we did because can you imagine if Liverpool in their best season ever couldn't finish it and couldn't win the title when we were just like two two wins away from winning it so it was like almost done it would have been unthinkable and Danny Murphy the Liverpool former Liverpool player says that Liverpool will be a wounded animal against Everton and he they will want to bounce back and bounce back in style and I really hope that will be the case that Liverpool will be very hungry, very motivated and I'm sure that Jurgen Klopp will fire up the team I mean, it's the Merseyside Derby, you, you don't need a lot of motivation for that For the first time for many years, Murphy said the blue half of the city will understandably go into the game expecting to win but in football you are best be, to be careful particularly given a team as good as this Liverpool We all know Jurgen Klopp's men have great resilience and character besides their obvious quality They have jumped over nearly every hurdle in the past couple of seasons and bounced back from losing European finals let alone one league game at Villa Park. If I was in the blue dressing room, I would say beware of the wounded animal, particularly as Mane, Henderson and Thiago should be all right to return. This is a fascinating game because of Everton's revival, but they will miss the momentum they would have got from their fans. Liverpool will view it as a wonderful opportunity. People are questioning them for the showing at Aston Villa, conceding free goals against Leeds, so they will want to silence the critics. Are Liverpool capable of getting back to being more resolute and harder to play against? Of course they are. They have had the best defensive record in the Premier League for the past two years and that is achieved by good organization, not luck. And Danny Murphy is right, Liverpool need to get back to being very hard to beat, very resolute, very tough defensively. My only worry is Adrian in goal, otherwise I have confidence that Liverpool can sort it out. I, it's just so, I hope that Adrian doesn't make a big mistake or two against uh, Everton. And former Liverpool striker John Aldridge uh, said uh, um, very interesting things about a potential power battle for the captaincy at Liverpool. He said, when Virgil van Dijk came to the club, Everyone was saying he would go on to be the captain and Jordan Henderson is not soft He probably knew what people were thinking and that the big Dutchman was a threat to his hopes of keeping hold of the armband But he upped his game as a captain in the dressing room and on the pitch And I really think he has been a brilliant captain for Liverpool and deserves all the accolades which have come his way in recent times when he's on the pitch He's always shouting orders 
lifting and organizing the players around him and if he had been playing at Aston Villa we would not have lost 7-2 without a doubt. I see that Henderson has got a bit of sick from uh, my old Republican of Ireland teammate Roy Keane for screaming and drawing attention to the fact he was fouled for the penalty which bought about England's equaliser by Thomas Munier. At the end of the day he was only doing what many players, foreign and homegrown, have been doing pretty much since football began. Although it does seem to have crept into the game more and more over the years, there is a big difference though between what Jordan did and what we see from other players who go down like a sack of spots when they, are not, they have not been touched. He was fouled by the defender who clearly pulled him back when Jordan was going to get to the ball ahead of him. So it was a penalty all day long. We have seen plenty of examples including a few with, Sadio, with Mo Salah in recent times when players have tried to do what is supposedly the right thing by staying on their feet and the referee takes the view that because the attacker stayed on upright he didn't have to give a decision. A foul is a foul whether the forward ends up on the ground or not until referees start to give them in those situations. Players will feel they have no alternative. But in today's game you have to go down. That's the, that's the point. You have to go down otherwise you won't get a penalty. That's just the nature of the game sometimes. And I'm just happy that uh, Jordan Henderson is back fit. He will be a very very important part of Liverpool's revival in the coming weeks. The next two games, Everton and Ajax away from home, that will be really really tricky, really hard, but if Liverpool can come away with like four points from those two games, then I think we can go on a run, because after that we play Sheffield United and Michelin at home and West Ham at home. Three tough games, but winnable games. So let's go Liverpool, let's beat Everton in the Merseyside derby, really looking forward to that. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this, have a nice day, goodbye!